It's a beautiful night in the Windy City as we get set for the Chicago Red Stars and Gotham FC in week two of the NWSL regular season. Making her first appearance here is Morgan Gatra. Sat out the first game due to a suspension. She'll be crucial in that midfield with the injured Julie Ertz out. Then on the other side for Gotham FC, you have the captain, Carly Lloyd. Well, she'll look to continue to find goals as she has done throughout her career. Up next, we have Chicago Red Stars and Gotham right here on Paris. Mount Plus. into Seat Geek Stadium in Bridgeview, Illinois, as we get set for the Chicago Red Stars and Gotham FC. I'm Josh Tolan with me is former NWSL player Jackie Manny. And Jackie, another great game tonight between the Red Stars and Gotham as we take a look at the regular season format. 12, 24 games, 12 home, 12 on the road. Single division, top six make the playoffs, and doesn't it seem like it's been forever since regular season play? I'm excited to kick off this 2021 season. You're looking at the top two teams getting the bye as we look back at the opening weekend of play for both these teams. We'll begin with the Red Stars going against Portland. Portland got on the board early and often, and look at this beauty of a goal. Adriana French looks quickly to play into Morgan Weaver's run, and then such a pretty touch into Sophia Smith. Sophia Smith gets on there twice, Tyler Lucy closes it out in the 72nd minute. And then on the other side, getting their first win of the season, Gotham FC. Just a great individual effort on that right side. Uses a little in the out touch to get some space and then buries that ball far post. And what a win it was for Gotham FC as Mitch Purse led the way, continues to be strong. Put her in the back line, put her up front. She's going to find success. Just a handful on the flank. You'll see her float from right to left. She's dangerous off the dribble. She'll go at you 1v1 and break you down defensively in those wide spaces and then has shown a ton of ability finishing her chances. And then on the other side, Mallory Pugh coming over after being with Sky Blue last year, played in one game for them, but she'll look to make a difference up top for head coach Rory Dames. She's a player that's going to be important for Chicago going forward. They're still trying to find that identity up top, especially with her pace, her quality, and just what she brings to that flank. She's going to do some big things. I mean, you look at her going against a tough defense in Gotham FC. Another fun one coming your way in just a matter of moments as we get set for Chicago in Gotham FC live from Bridgeview, Illinois. Get your first looks at the new kits for the Chicago Red Stars as they will be hosting Gotham FC at SeatGeek Stadium. First game at home since 2019 for the Red Stars in front of the fans as we will take a look at the starting lineups. We'll begin with the Red Stars first and Rory Dames. And he's going to have a different 11 than what he had last week couple different players coming in tonight. Some changes straight up the spine for Chicago, mainly in part because Julie Ertz is out with a knee injury. So you'll see Kayla Sharples come into that center back position. Cole Prico and Gatra will kind of sit in that six. And then Rachel Hill will try and find some turnovers and transition quickly up top for some goal scoring. And then on the other side for Gotham FC, same look as last week for Freya Coom. If it's not broke, you don't have to fix it. <laughs> Absolutely. And in that midfield, I mean, you can talk about their midfield quality all day long, but their top three were really impressive last week against Houston. Midge Purse on the right, Monaghan on the left, and then Vienne getting that start up top last week was big time in her debut. And you're looking at another great game coming your way as we get set for the Red Stars and Gotham FC from Bridgeview, Illinois, week two of the NWSL regular season. About to get going. And we are underway. Chicago in the black. Gotham FC in the all white kits. Josh Tolan, former pro. Jackie Manny with you this evening. And Jackie, last week for Chicago, it was a rough go, allowing the five goals against Portland. They're going to want to be a much better defensive team. One of the things that Rory Dames talked about, they cannot make the mistakes that they did last week because these teams in the NWSL will make you pay. Absolutely. And, I mean, every game 
in this league counts. The parity of this league is so big, especially this year and especially coming off of so much time off in the offseason, dealing with COVID, dealing with Challenge Cups, dealing with the bubble. These players are so excited to get out here and, and this is going to be a fun season to watch. You look at it, we just talked about a moment ago, Chicago's first game in front of a home fan since 2019. That game was the semifinal against Portland, a game in which they won, which sent them on to their first ever NWL championship, which ultimately they fell to North Carolina. But obviously they want to repeat that year, give themselves the best chance to get back to that NWL championship. Meanwhile, on the other side, Gotham FC, really the surprise team this year in the Challenge Cup, falling to the Portland Thorns in kicks. But one of the things that Freddie Coombe talked about is how she liked how she possessed with their build and were able to progress with the ball. Very pleased with the clean sheets that her team has had. You talk about the one against Houston. Well, for Freya Coom and Gotham FC, they've had four clean sheets in their last six games. And strong defensively, but going back to that possession comment, this is a team that likes to be on the ball. They like to dictate the tempo of the game and a huge piece to that and how they've done that is through Allie Long. She's so good at sitting in front of the back line, kind of being that get out of jail free card and she's done really well for this New York side. There you see the dispossession there nearly by Allie Long as DiBernardo will play it out wide. Rachel Hill on the wing, has Watt inside. Mandy Freeman over to cut that ball out to the touchline. Look at Mandy Freeman, head coach Freddie Coombe. Not enough good things she could say about Mandy Freeman. One of those underrated players has really gained more strength and very good on the build. She'll have a tough task going against that top three of the Red Stars. Pew at the top of the box. That one blocked away by Estelle Johnson. Long returning back to the East Coast after being with O.L. Rain and the Portland Thorns. Long, when she came over in the trade, started her first game with Gotham FC. That happened to be that Challenge Cup final. Freeman works her way forward. Looking to go over the top and no one up front for Gotham FC. Of course, the man in charge for the Red Stars, a man you played for and Rory Dames and the only coach to still be with the team from 2013. He's the only one to do that here in the NWSL as we've seen other coaches go into other places. Plenty of success you look at the last five years, obviously the semifinals in four straight, and then the fifth year ultimately getting past that mark, which they struggled to get to that championship game against the Courage. He did, and it was, he put it so perfectly on the call with him this week. You know, he said, we're three points out of first place. It's, it's funny when you put so much into a 5-0 loss, and it, it's a big deal to lose 5-0, absolutely. But given that it was at Portland, that's a really hard environment to go play in, but it's also, it's, it was game one of the season, and I liked his mentality and his attitude, and on to the next. Striding forward as the Red Stars played into the box, and this one is sent out. Now cleared away, but not out of danger as this shot comes on, but right on Sheridan. A great stop there by Sheridan. That's one of the things I love about Sarah Gordon being out on that wide flank space in the outside back position is that she's got so much pace, so much athleticism, a huge engine, and she will just drive and attack on that left side, and she'll be able to get end line and get crosses in the box and just get numbers forward to allow this Chicago side to get some confidence going forward. Sarah Gordon, one of those local products. See numerous of those players with the Red Stars as there you get a look at the head coach, Freya Coombe, and she came in really as a replacement coach in 2019, then got the full-time gig last year, and she's really turned this team around. And you look at what they did in the Challenge Cup, getting the first win here against Houston to open the season. They are now looking like a team that's going to be one to watch out for here in 2021 as we'll have our first corner of the night. Here's that look again at Sarah Gordon getting up out of the flank on that left side. 
Played into the box quickly. Hill gets a piece, and Sheridan able to smother it. You look at the Chicago team, winless in their last seven, dating back to the fall series. Four losses, three draws during that time. Their last win coming September 20th in that fall series against this Gotham team then known as Sky Blue FC. Monaghan plays it across, headed out by Davidson. Kruger looks to bring it down. Monaghan back on the ball. This one played out once again by the Red Stars in their new jerseys. Didasco will go inside looking for Vienna as this one's knocked out and now Freeman back on top. I should say Cujo back on top for Gotham. Long will play into the circle to Estelle Johnson. Johnson plays it wide. And running out of room is Erica Skrosky. Katra getting that first start after serving her suspension. Former number one overall pick in 2015 for the Houston Dash. Former teammate of that player right there, Kalia Watt. Gordon. Davidson, another former number one overall pick. Kruger. This one headed away by Didasco. Cujo. Looking for long, connects. Patience here by Gotham, no surprise, and then they'll turn the ball right over. It's one of the things that's a strength of this Gotham side is they like to slow this game down. They want their midfielders on the ball. Allie Long especially, they'll draw you in with some shorter passes and then Allie Long and Carly Lloyd can get that ball and spring it wide, switch the point of attack, and then they'll go at you quickly, especially with the front three that we talked right off the bat about. Davidson cuts to her right now, drops back to Alyssa Nair. Alyssa Nair tied second all time in NWSL history with clean sheets with 80 French, 30 total. Nicole Barnhart of, close, of course leads the league with 52 in total for Kansas City now. DiBernardo unable to keep that in on the near touch line. Look at that game against Portland. It was a rough 30 minutes to start. Really, Portland taking control. A much different looking team here for Chicago as they've been able to readjust and not making the same mistakes that they did early in that game that cost them. The end goes up with Sharples. Probably Lloyd and Gotham calling for the ball, but, and they will get it. Typically see a lot of goal scoring between these two squads. Looking at every Chicago Gotham game since 2018 has featured at least three goals that covers the span of seven games. Red Stars looking for their first goal of the regular season, meanwhile, Sky, or excuse me, Gotham with the one from Mitch Purse and the victory over Houston. <laughs> They're Sky Blue for quite a long time, I'll give you that. <laughs> Johnson plays it down the line. Katra looking to go ahead and trying to find Rachel Hill up front. 
Lloyd at midfield. Monahan. Monahan to that dangerous right foot. Takes a deflection and sails wide. Corner now here for Gotham FC. The interchanging of these top six for Gotham is so good. We saw Carly Lloyd start that attack. She played it out wide to Paige Monahan, And then you'll also see Carly Lloyd just drive that run forward into the left flank as well. So just their movement on and off the ball makes them a big handful defensively. Didasco will set up for the corner on the far side. Plays it in towards the six, and that one caught in the air by Alyssa Nair. Gordon backing up at Skrosky. Nice threaded pass to Pugh, but just a little bit too much weight. That's gonna be the big question. How does Mallory Pugh develop here under Rory Dames? And if Rory Dames is good at anything, it is drawing the absolute most out of players. He's kind of got that maximizer characteristic where he can just motivate you and get the absolute most out of you at any given time. And so if you're gonna put anybody on his roster to try and improve, he's, he's the guy to do it. Well, you look at Mallory Pugh, really burst on the scene as a teenager, youngest player to de debut at 17 years old as Watt pushes up the field, but dispossessed on the play. Scored six goals her rookie season for the Spirit. Then on the other side, you have Kalia Watt. If he can get her back to her scoring ways, especially with what Watt did with the dash in 2016, when she had a career high of 11, that would bode well for both those players and especially this team. Absolutely. They're just like we talked about at the top. They're just trying to find their identity, especially up top. They've got a really experienced midfield group. They're strong through the back. And obviously with Nair and goal, they've got some confidence there. But up top, they're just trying to find their way, trying to gel, trying to figure out what group fits together best. And they were excited about these three up top tonight. Didasco comes near side to Lloyd. Lloyd. Little step over to Didasco, plays it across. Lloyd gives it a go, and that one off the crossbar, and now cleared away. Close opportunity right there for Carly Lloyd. Carly Lloyd takes this with her left foot. You see her set the play up here with that little in the out move. She plays it. You see a deflection towards the top of the box and then just volleys this on the half volley. Nair does a good job. Couldn't see if she actually got her fingertips off that, but Lloyd right off the crossbar. Well, you go back to the 2019 regular season. Carly Lloyd led this squad with nine goals. Chicago takes the ball away, played out wide. Hill in stride. Freeman coming over on defense. Cut back. Didasco is so good at anticipating those passes, able to step front, allowing Carly Lloyd to get to the ball. Colaprico looking to go over the top on a diagonal ball. Just too soft on that pass back as Pew is able to take advantage and now win her team a corner kick. Great hustle there by Pew to take that ball away. And now another opportunity here for the Red Stars early in this one. Davidson sets up for an inward swinging ball. That one headed away and now cleared out by Gotham. No, not cleared out. And now it is sent away. Yeah. 
And you see Gotham's Paige Monahan down on the ground being stretched out. But there you get a great look at the jerseys of the Red Stars, the momentum jerseys, as we take a look back at that foul. Here's Monahan going in, gets clipped with her leg up in the air. Going back to those jerseys, though, I want to be back on the field with Chicago just so I can wear them. See all the teams throughout the league doing such a great job with their kit reveals this season. As this is played down the field, Kruger giving chase. And now Nero will play it back to midfield. Long. Long coming over in that trade from O.L. Rain, but Freya Coombe talking about how she's settled in quite nicely here with Gotham, bringing leadership as well as just another strong vocal player to this club. She allows the two center backs, if you look at how wide Johnson and Freeman are, she allows them to go a little bit wider, allows the outside backs, Didasco's way up high, Skrowski's way up high, and Allie Long will just sit in that space, and she's so composed on the ball, she allows for a whole different dynamic possession-wise for this New York team. Crowd not happy with that call from our referee. Dore Monroy, second season in the NWSL as a referee. Great opportunity here for Gotham to capitalize. Even better look right there are those kids and the L train there. They've done some pretty cool kits from year to year, but these ones might be my favorite. Cujo sets up. That one punched away by Nair. And now Gordon tracks it down. And will play it out to safety. It's a great win by Nair, especially when those balls are coming in more direct. It's a really good job to get her fist on the ball, get it up and away towards the opposite side of the field. Here's this ball coming in. She reads this so well. It's not easy to be the only one coming forward as the rest of the players on the field are coming back, but she does a good job of cleanly hitting that. You want it to go up and out in the opposite direction where everybody is. Pew. Pew with a little room. Side steps. Good job stepping up there by Skrowski to clear that one away from danger. Gordon. Coloprico. Sharples plays it in towards the spot. Sheridan able to knock it down and then grab it. Petra was right in the area for the Red Stars. Lloyd pops that one up, is able to chase it down and can't get by Rachel Hill. Didasco turns away from DiBernardo. And the Canadian goalkeeper Sheridan will play it out. Hill looking for the back post, looking for Pew. Pew plays it in with the right foot. Went to the near post, but no one there for the Red Stars. Look at this Red Stars team under Rory Dames. They have never had a losing season. The one time they finished at 500 was the first year in 2013. Every year since, they have had a winning season. It's just remarkable the consistency that he has brought to the club. It is, and it was also kind of a funny point, too, just because Rory is 
is known for kind of seeing the bigger picture and being able to be patient while he goes about it. And even if that means a couple losses here and there to figure things out by the time that things really matter, he's very good at that part of the game. You know, you can also talk about a little bit of that patience too on the other side for Freya Kuman. Elise LaHue, what she has done at the GM, bringing these different players for Gotham FC, the team that really surprised everyone, but you bring in a player like Mitch Purse from Portland, and then last year the surprise player in Cujo, this year bringing over an Alley Long, have done a really good job putting this team together and finding quality players, whether it be through the draft or through trades. Quality players bringing up the standard of where they're playing their home games. I mean, just the excitement around this team and what they've done with the rebrand has been so awesome to see. Skrowski getting her second start of the season. She didn't start a game in the Challenge Cup. You have to go back to the fall series when she last started before the regular season began here in the NWSL. Scoreless here between Chicago and Gotham FC. Josh Toll and Jackie Manny with you this evening. Di Bernardo has Hill to her right. That's where she tries to go, but Freeman right there for Gotham. Freeman back and healthy. That has been a huge thing for Freya Coombe. Di Bernardo tries to slip this ball in, and then Hill comes through the back to try and get a touch out of it, but it looks like she clips the back of her Achilles. Freeman, a former number 10 overall pick out of USC. Johnson. That one cut out by Pugh. Gatry able to get on top for the Red Stars. Looking to connect with Watt. Still missing that final pass when they do turn the ball over in terms of Red Stars getting it offensively, but their transition's been quicker this week. They've got a little bit more energy in their step this week. They look like a different team than we saw against Portland. Doing a good job of keeping it to one side, trying to turn the ball over, and then you saw Mallory Pugh be able to get in between that. Kruger. That one. Played out, last touch by Purse of Gotham. Control will drop his back to the midfield. Davidson. Kloprika right there, a step in front of that pass. Gordon. Pew in the area. Towards the end line. One of the things that Freddie Coombe talked about tonight was building on their possession, need to take their chances when they get them. Wants to be more efficient on the defensive third. Talked about how Chicago was gonna be tough coming out in front of their home crowd for the first time since 2019, the last time fans were allowed here at SeatGeek Stadium. One real good opportunity by Carly Lloyd that hit off the crossbar, and that's really been at about for both teams. Chicago's had a couple of opportunities, and maybe here for Watt. And Didasco, good recovery to play that one out past the end line. It's a great little sequence by Chicago. And Kelia Watts, actually, who's usually on the flank side, has been in that nine spot. But a good touch into Kelia Watts' run. And the ball spinning a little bit too much for her to get a big touch that she can run onto with that pace that she has. But a good opportunity for Chicago. Left-footed ball, lofted in. 
Kruger turns, and that one blocked up front and then sent up into the air, and that will find its way to the left side of the frame. This looked like it was going to be another corner opportunity, but this in-swinger from Tierna Davidson comes in. Sharples goes up and battles for it. Kruger tries to get one on, and then Kalia Watt comes in to try and find that on the half turn, but can't get enough on it. Skrowski in the perfect position there for Gotham FC. Red Stars looking for that first goal of the season. So far, a quiet night for the goal scorer against Houston and Mitch Purse, who that ball was intended for. Also in the vicinity for Gotham was Caprice Didasco as it was headed out. Chicago's doing a good job of clogging up that left side for New York. They're making it hard to find Mitch Purse's feet. And then they're doing a really good job of getting numbers around the ball. And when they turn the ball over, it's quickly to transition to try and find runs like this into Mal Pugh, into Kalia Watt. Hill. Toward the left foot, plays it across. What? And that one slapped away by Sheridan. Great look there from Watt. Big save from Sheridan. Gordon. Long right with her. And now an opportunity for a set piece for the Red Stars. This is a huge save by Sheridan. Rachel Hill does a good job. She finds Kalia Watt at the top of the box, and she one times this into the far post. Kalia Watt kind of spins it into that back post, but Sheridan, she's got her feet set and just fully lays out to get a touch on that ball. It's a huge save by Sheridan to keep that out of the back of the net. Davidson. That one right in to Gotham FC. He's out right into Monaghan on that attempt. Monaghan's one that we haven't talked enough about because her physical presence, like we just saw, her ability to defend bend and track back the outside backs and that's a handful when you've got Sarah Gordon coming at you all game but here she is coming in hard against Tierna Davidson and then Sarah Gordon gets the ball again Paige Monahan just trying to put pressure on her body's up a little bit too hard but she is a handful on that right flank she's great on the ball and you can just watch her all game long tracking the amount of ground that she covers is huge and her defensive work rate for Gotham is big time this one sent into the area, brought down by Hill. This one played up by Johnson and Sheridan able to keep it in. Sharples will head it back, dangerous pass. And they are able to get there before Evelyn Vian could. Colaprico. Colaprico is one that we haven't talked a ton about too. And obviously Julie Ertz in that sixth position is just so good, so hard to beat. But with that, you've got Colaprico who usually has to come into that eight in the midfield. And she just, just changes the dynamic for her. And I think she's so much more comfortable screening the line. And I'm excited to see her back with Morgan Gatra sitting and screening the line, being able to face the game. She's really good at connecting, breaking lines with her passing. She's really smart with how she sees the game. Hill. Right there, Didasco to win the ball to Purse. Now Cujo. She'll switch sides. Skrowski. Monahan will play it back. Long. Yeah. 
Long is just so comfortable and composed on the ball. Doesn't matter what the pressure is. She has just always got her head up, always looking to see what the best pass is, and she'll take her time calmly to do it. Cujo. Freeman in the circle. Purse. Long looking to thread this one through, but too far for both Vian and Carly Lloyd. Well, Jackie, look at both these two teams. Continuity being the main thing. You have Chicago returning 22 players from last year. Gotham FC returning 23. With Chicago, they've, they've hit a little bit of the injury bug. They've struggled to find consistency in terms of their lineup and who's playing. And on the opposite side, I think New Jersey, New York has just been able to find that consistently consistency and be able to kind of gel with who they have on the field. Their starting lineup has been pretty strong. A couple switches here and there, but they've been able to really find their rhythm. And, and I think Chicago is just kind of on the cusp of figuring things out. Freeman. We'll drop this back for Sheridan. Johnson. Back to her center back partner, Freeman. Lloyd. Comes near side to Purse. Purse. Side steps to defender Hill. Cujo. Purse sends it across. Now a chance here for Pew to run on a counter. Has Watt outside to the left. Pew always dangerous with the feet at, with the ball at her feet. Striding for Pew. That one up and over. Here is such a good look at what makes Mal Pugh. Mal Pugh, you see Cole Prico get this ball out. Another header by DiBernardo. And then Pugh gets this ball at the back of the circle. And then once she finds some pace, once she can get that ball off of her feet, she can just fly. And then she gets a great touch on the ball from a kind of awkward angle on that right side. But such a good look at how quickly she can transition, how dangerous she is on the ball, and just what she's capable of in terms of running at you when she's got the ball at her feet. Pew battled injuries last year. Just the one game that she played with Sky Blue before coming over here to the Red Stars. Lloyd looking for Vian. That one headed away by Sharples. Sharples. Third year player out at Northwestern. Again, another one of those local products that Rory Dames likes to find. Hill plays it in. What an opportunity! Chicago started to look dangerous in that attacking third. They're just transitioning so quickly and breaking numbers forward with Hill and Watt and Pew up top. Hill with that one time ball into Kalia Watt. Little bit of an off touch, but Estelle Johnson does a good job at closing that space quickly and making sure she takes away that angle to goal. Fourth corner here in the first half for the Red Stars. Now, 10 minutes remains in this first half between Chicago and Gotham FC. Thrilled you could join us tonight. Pew. Pew was left wide open there at the top of the area. Just cannot get the quality pass that she would have liked behind that. Of course, a full slate of games going on this weekend in the NWSL. Orlando in North Carolina playing right now in North Carolina. Orlando up in that, and then tomorrow, some more great games 
ahead here in the NWSL. As you're looking at the Cascadia rivalry between the Portland Thorns and OL Reign. And that will be followed up as well with Houston hosting Kansas City. And then we'll have midweek action for you for the first time this year on Wednesday night. Lloyd. That one knocked away by Kruger. Kruger, two-time best 11 in 2019 as well as 2017. Also Challenge Cup best 11 last year. Cujo. Johnson. Davidson clears it away. One of the better sequences we've seen from New York all the game. Lloyd looking to connect with V in there, just cannot get it to her. Freeman wins the ball back. Didasco to Lloyd. Catra finds Pew. Pew. And that one right at Sheridan. Solid first half here for Mallory Pew. She's had some open chances. Looking to get that first goal in a Red Star uniform. It's kind of textbook to exactly what the game plan for Chicago is. They're going to force them into this left flank of New York. They're going to try and compact this space. And then as soon as they turn the ball over, they're going to quickly learn to turn, find Mal Pugh, try to spray everything wide, and then go at you fast. It's just that final touch, that final pass that Chicago's missing right now. Long. Johnson. Pew. Pushing it up. Has Watt ahead. Watt had to hold off as originally she was in an offside position. Kaylee Awan in her second season under Rory Dames after coming over from the Houston Dash. Patience by Gotham. Not afraid to possess and Bill now the back. Lloyd. Back heel to Monaghan. Vian with the header, and that one off the crossbar. Two off the crossbar for Gotham FC. The first one by Lloyd, that one by Vian. But a corner coming for Gotham. What a little sequence down this left side by Gotham. Lloyd with a great run into the flank, and then Monahan rejoins her on this left side. You'll see a little back heel from Lloyd, frees up Monahan on the left. Great one time pass, and then Vienne just faces that ball, tries to get it on goal. Vienne's first professional goal came against this Red Star team in last year's Challenge Cup semifinals. This is played in.
for Evelyn Vians last year. She went over to Paris FC. She scored a brace in her final game for Paris FC. Got her first cap this season by the national team in Canada. She's had quite the year and she looks to continue to find success now and build that over here into the NWSL. 11 goals in 14 games with Paris FC. few minutes left here in the first half. Of course, we'll have highlights and stats from you for this one, and we'll also show you some news and notes from around the league. Some big names coming back to the NWSL. We'll have that for you at halftime. And then a late whistle, and now a free kick coming here for the Red Stars. Red Stars, of course, without Julie Ertz, who's out with an MCL sprain. Should be back, though, at least in July with the U.S. national team. We'll see when she comes back officially for the Red Stars. Just a huge presence on and off the field with Julie, Julie Ertz. I mean, her ability to sit in that six and just kind of disrupt the flow of a game is second to none. But just her leadership, her quality on and off the field is going to be a big loss. The service, low liner. Colaprico, hard challenge there, and that's gonna draw the whistle of our referee. And we're gonna have our first booking of the night. And it will go to the Canadian, Evelyn, Evelyn Vian. Cole Prico does a perfect job here to strip this ball away from Vienne. And then Vienne, not too happy about the fact that Cole Prico just stripped it, comes in hard on Cole Prico's right side. Gets a little bit of the ball, but a little bit too much body on the way in. Davidson lining up. Another low liner takes a hop. Purse, plenty of room to work with. Has two players to her right. Lloyd, Pew back deep. Lloyd. Overlapping is Didasco towards the back post and just off the head of Purse and it will trickle out past the end line. For you, do you have a preference where you want purse, back line, front line? I think she's just so exciting on the ball. It's hard to kind of stick her in the back, but also with the way that, that this team plays or even the U.S. team plays. I mean, she's got all the space on that flank side and out back, outside back position as well. Kruger, the player being helped up. We will have one minute of stoppage time here added on in the first half. Petra. Pew. Looking to go to the back post. That's going to hop past Watch. He is able to get it at the touch line.
Tipinara loses possession along. Now a chance for Lloyd and Gotham to counter. Vien up ahead, Sharples though able to step in front. It's a great look by Lloyd to try and slip Vienne into the back, but such good defensive work and positioning by Kayla Sharples to be able to cut that ball off and keep possession. Well, 45 minutes in the books. Jackie, your thoughts on the first half of action? I thought it started and ended pretty back and forth. It was pretty open, but I thought Chicago really had the run of play, had better chances throughout the middle of that first half. I think it's been back and forth, but we've seen what these two teams can do. Well, a chance now for both these two teams to head into half and regroup and try to decide on how they will come out here in the second half and look at the adjustments that will be made between these two clubs. A solid half for both sides. Still looking for that first goal. We'll see when that happens. Hopefully here in the second half, we'll step aside. We'll be back with halftime for you from SeatGeek Stadium. You're watching the Red Stars and Gotham FC. Welcome back to SeatGeek Stadium in Bridgeview, Illinois. We're on half between the Chicago Red Stars and Gotham FC, but plenty of news around the NWSL as we have two big names returning back to play here in the States. And Sam Mewis will return to North Carolina and Rose Lavelle will head on to OL Reign. Both coming off of impressive stints overseas with Manchester City. And they just bring so much to the table, so much experience coming back to this league. They'll be gone for a little bit with those Olympic qualifiers and whatnot coming up, but they are so much fun to watch. And then are you also looking at what's coming up for the NWSL and some of these teams? Well, the Women's International Championship Cup will come to Portland as Providence Park will play host to it August 18th through the 21st. Houston Dash will be in attendance along with Barcelona and Lyon. So some of the best in the world getting together in August in the Rose City as we take a look at Mark Parsons who will leave at the end of the season to move on to coach the Netherlands. Doesn't seem like it, but he is only 34 years old. He's done a great job in the NWSL. I'm excited to see where he takes the Netherlands. An historic moment for OL Reigns. Lauren Barnes, her 150th appearance with OL Reign, all with the same club. The first player to ever do that. She had a moment there before the game to celebrate with her family. What a day. There are 150 games. You talk about the longevity that she has had with the club. Just been one of the most influential players there, along with another one in Jess Fishlock. We are at half, though, here at SeatGeek Stadium. When we return, we will have highlights and stats. Welcome back. We are scoreless here at half between the Red Stars and Gotham FC as we take a look back at the first 45 minutes of action between these two clubs. A few chances on both sides as things we could go in in the 26th minute. Yeah, we saw some chances from Red Stars, New York. Here's some one off of a corner kick. A little scrum in the box. Kruger gets a foot on it. Kalia Watt comes in and New York does a good job at keeping that out of the back of the net and dealing with the pressure. Skrowski in that perfect position to help make that stop. So Sheridan didn't have to. And then here we see another Red Stars opportunity. Tierna Davidson sends a great ball in. Rachel Hill gets on the first ball. DiBernardo keeps it alive to Pew. And then Kalia Watt again with Estelle Johnson. But Sheridan and that back line do a good job again of weathering that storm of Chicago coming at him. And then in the 40th minute, we'd have a real close call here for Gotham FC. Gotham starts it down this left flank. Monahan gets the ball. She finds Lloyd. And then Lloyd with this cheeky little back pass with her heel finds Monahan again on that left side. She sends a great ball into Vienne's run. And Vienne right off the crossbar. Two crossbars for Chicago in that first half. The first one by Lloyd, that one by Vienne. As we take a look at the stats here, possession in favor of Gotham FC, but sometimes stats can be misleading as we are scoreless here at half. Now, what sticks out to you so far? You know, it is exactly what both teams are comfortable with. New York, New Jersey wants the ball at their feet. They want to dictate possession. And then Red Stars, they want to get their chances on the goal. They're going to try and make it difficult by staying compact. And as soon as they win that ball, they're going to drive forward and transition quickly to try and get those shots. 
You look at this as we look at what will happen here in this next 45 between these two teams. We'll step aside for a moment. Welcome back. Scoreless here coming out a half between the Red Stars and Gotham FC. So 45 minutes will decide if we're going to have a winner in this one as we'll take a look at the upcoming schedule for both these squads. And here you have it. Well, tomorrow you have Houston and Kansas City, and then you'll have the Cascadia rivalry between Portland Thorns and OL Reign. Orlando and Portland added on Wednesday. Washington taking on the Houston Dash as well on Wednesday. For Chicago, things get a little rough for them. They have three games here in the span of eight days as they will take on Kansas City on Wednesday, and then they'll make a trip out to Houston on Saturday to take on the dash. So you're looking at a game where at some point we'll see some substitutions. None were made at half, but you got to think, Roy Dames planning maybe for those future games ahead with uh, eight, ga eight days, three games, and then just the amount of pace that they played with here so far in this first half. Absolutely, and Rory Dames kind of put it best to us on the call is this season can easily be broken down into three chunks, and that's before Olympics, during Olympics, and after Olympics, and I think that kind of nailed it just because there's so many different dynamics that happen, and it's almost a good thing that you have to go through a grind in three games like that in a short amount of time because it makes you play players, it makes you use your bench, and those players are going to be key once the Olympics starts and some of those U.S. and national team players are gone. You got to wonder if maybe at some point tonight we'll see former Gotham player Sky Blue then and Sarah Waldmoyer. She was a number two overall pick for Sky Blue FC as this second half is underway. Josh Tolan, Jackie Manny, the former pro with you here this evening. Both teams had opportunities as Didasco on the overlap gets it quickly from Lloyd. Played in. Sharples plays it down. This one's sent away. Pew, dangerous in that first half and dangerous when she can get full go with her speed. Has Watt inside. Now we'll slow it up. DiBernardo. Petron, her first appearance of the regular season after sitting out a one game suspension from the Challenge Cup. Hard challenge there by Paige Monahan, and that's going to draw the whistle. We do have one yellow card that was handed out in the first half to Evelyn Vian of Gotham FC. Monahan does a good job at tracking back defensively after this ball gets turned over, but comes in a little bit too late on the left side of Cole Prico as Cole Prico is going forward. Daniel Cole Prico, former Rookie of the Year in 2015. We actually have three former Rookie of the Year on these two rosters. Julie Ertz being the other one for the Red Stars and Imani Dorsey for Gotham FC. Watt into the area, towards the end line. Crosses, Freeman right there. Monahan plays it to the touchline. Cole Prico able to get there before Purse. Down the line. Red Stars looking for their first win of the season after falling to Portland 5-0. Meanwhile, Gotham trying to build on the win that they had against the Dash, winning 1-0. Lone goal coming from Mitch Purse. Watt crosses. And there is the whistle. Watt unable to keep that ball in on the end line and will have a goal kick. Clea Watt in those last two sequences with some dangerous changes of pace here around the end line. You see her get this ball, and it's just a quick little shift to keep her on her left side. Can't keep this ball in play, but last two plays, we've seen glimpses of that pace that Kalia Watt can play with. Freeman. Tapped ahead by Didasco. Kruger, DiBernardo. DiBernardo scoops it up to Kruger, but flag is up. K 
Kaylin Sheridan getting the second start here in the 2021 regular season. She did not play in the Challenge Cup. And then already one game final here in the NWSL as Orlando able to get the victory two to one over North Carolina. LaRue and Morgan with goals for the pride and lone goal coming from Jess McDonald for the courage. Well, Gotham FC was the surprise in the Challenge Cup. Might Orlando Pride be the surprise here in the regular season? Hill. Hill looking for Pew. And then falling down was Freeman. Pushed over, though, by Pew. That goal will not be allowed as the crowd, first time in attendance since the 2019 semifinal, were on their feet for a moment. How incredible is it to actually hear some cheering from the stands. Rachel Hill does a good job at being patient. She draws Estelle Johnson out of that back line, tries to find Pew, but Pew ends up just nicking Mandy Freeman's feet on her run in. Well, Rory Dames talked about Pew being one of the bright spots in that first game. Well, she's looking pretty good here in the second one as well. Dupinaro flicks this on. Freeman heads it away. Cujo giving chase. Skrosky. Sharples, long ball over the top. Cujo, Cujo was picked up in the expansion draft by Racing Louisville. Gotham FC had a trade to get her back on the squad. Really one of the surprises last year, but Freya Kroom talking about how good that Jennifer Cujo is at winning tackles and how important she is at that midfield. She is not afraid to make a challenge. She's in, she brings the perfect balance to Allie Long and Carly Lloyd in that midfield three. She kind of brings that feistiness, that competitiveness, that edge. And it's the perfect little balance between the, the possession-based Allie Long and then just the freedom and the movement that you see out of Carly Lloyd. And now some movement by Gordon. Cuts it across, still loose and away. Gordon right back there and smothering the ball is Sheridan. Sarah Gordon using her speed down this left side. Once she gets going, watch out because she can drive onto this left flank so quickly. She gets a great ball in, holds on to it, maybe a touch long but puts up great ball in and they're just missing that quality in the final third with that final pass, but they are doing a very good job of creating opportunities off the transition. You talk about Rory Dame's patience that he has with players, Sarah Gordon being one of those, which is a great example. Her first few years in the league, very much just used as a substitute, but then for about the last three years, she's really submitted herself in that starting 11 for head coach Rory Dames. She has, she has a pretty incredible story in terms of her journey to get to where she has today and she was always just that athletic fast player and in the last few years she's added so much to her game in terms of just how she sees the game how she prepares for the game her skill her touch on the ball she's improved in so many ways and and i'm i know i'm glad that roy Dave's never ever caught her out purse the end trying to cut to her left foot coming back is good draw Cujo, turning away is Cujo, Skrosky. And now Gotham FC will just reset. And then Cole Aprico is going to get the whistle as she hip checks Caprice Didasco.
Cujo, the former Ghana Football Player of the Year, will set up. Sharples. Sharples making sure she is in the right position for the Red Stars. I think all the players that have stepped into the starting lineup this game for Chicago have done really well. I think Morgan Gatra has done so well in that sixth position at screening the line. She's kept possession. She's done a really good job of positioning herself to disrupt the play. And Julie Ertz is not an easy person to fill in for, and she's done a pretty good job so far. Throw in here now for the Red Stars. And Kruger, of course, will have to back up. These two did not see one another in this year's Challenge Cup. The last time they met was in the fall series. They split that series. You also go back for the Red Stars. The last time they won a game was against this Gotham FC side in that fall series. They are winless in their last seven. Meanwhile, for Gotham FC, they have been strong defensively. Four clean sheets in their last six games. And a big one against the Dash, three in the fall series. Kruger, Freeman there to play it away. Hill to Gatra. Long right on Hill. And this will stick with the Red Stars. about consistency with the Red Stars and how they've been so successful about getting to the semifinals and then the championship in 2019 before ultimately falling to the North Carolina Courage. Well, for years, Gotham FC has struggled just one time and made the playoffs. That one in 2013, they're really looking to get back to that, but a much, looking, much different looking team here this year and what they bring to the game. Pew. Pew to the right, up top. A chance here for Watt, blocked away by Didasco, sent through, and that one left of the frame. Great chance here for the Red Stars. What a couple big opportunities for Chicago. Pugh's so patient on the ball, gets her head up, sees Kalia Watt at the top of the box. Kalia Watt just can't keep her touch close and tight enough to be able to get that clean shot off. And then a second one from the top of the box. Huge opportunity for Chicago. Rachel Hill nearly able to net that first goal for the Red Stars, but sends it wide. Chicago throughout this game has looked the more dangerous of the two teams in terms of that final third. Although Gotham FC with two excellent opportunities in the first half, both going off the crossbar. Long.
Good battle there between Purse and Kruger. It's one battle that I thought we'd see a little bit more of. A, again, Chicago doing a really good job at screening the space in between and making it hard for them to find Purse. But Kruger is such a good 1v1 defender, so hard to get around, does a really good job there to contain Purse. Relatively quiet night for Purse and Monaghan of Gotham FC. Monaghan has had plenty of success against the Red Stars in her career. She's actually logged two braces against Chicago. Now we will take a replay at this foul. Mal Pugh on the ball here. Gotham not happy with this call. But Skrosky gets her foot in there. Mal Pugh with that little outside of the foot touch to try and spin the ball around. So Evelyn Vian will come off and on will come Ifioma Anumanu. So the 26 year old comes on, fifth year out of Cal. Anumanu, another one of those players that can score for Gotham FC as Saddam Lee will also head on to the field for Freya Coombe as Erica Skrosky will after committing the foul, she'll now come off for the evening. Johnson tracking back, Watt right with her. Good pressure there by Watt. Gordon with a long throw. Headed backwards by Lee. Corner now for the Red Stars. Oh, they're gonna say no. Well, that's a miss there. That was easily off Gotham FC. A rough one there. Red Stars should be taking a corner, but instead a goal kick for Kaylin Sheridan. Kolopreka wins the ball back for Chicago. Drops it off for Kruger. Now patience here by the Red Stars. Gatra. Sharples finds Kruger. Hill, Watt, Kruger in the channel, has Pew inside. Hill chips it over, Pew. Offside flag though is up. Kruger gets up on this right flank with a little ball in from Rachel Hill. And then Mal Pugh, once this ball goes back out, just stays in an offside position. Gotham does a good job at bringing their lineup once this ball goes back negative and Mal Pugh just can't get back on side in time. Gordon. With that sub from VN going off, we'll see Carly Lloyd push a little bit higher. Sodom Lee is gonna sit in that 10 spot where Carly Lloyd typically plays. We'll see if Carly Lloyd can get on the ball a little bit more closer to goal, see if they can create some more chances for this Gotham side. Pushing up is Rachel Hill. Cuts it across. Freeman able to heal it away. Katra. 
Di Bernardo looking to send a cross in. And we'll see if this is a corner for Chicago. Cujo saying it's a goal kick. Last time the referee missed one, but this time it will be a corner for the Red Stars. Di Bernardo gets this ball on the left flank, tries to get some space by playing with Gatra. And then Di Bernardo decides to go end line. Cujo gets a touch on it. And Di Bernardo definitely earns that corner kick for Chicago. Fifth corner of the night for the Red Stars. Davidson. Ball still loose, still rolling around. And now Long will send it away. Scoreless here in the 65th minute between the Red Stars and Gotham FC. Josh Tolan, the former pro, Jackie Manny with you. Di Bernardo. Gordon. Good job tracking back there by Paige Monahan. So impressed with the amount of ground that Paige Monahan can cover. Granted, it's drawn her back away from the goal, which is where you ultimately want her to be. But her ability to track those outside back runs has been pretty impressive. The engine and the stamina on her is great. You also see with that substitution that was made with Sodom Lee coming on the field, it looks like Purse also now playing in that right back position for Gotham FC. Of course, position that she knows with the national team also has played there with the club and with Sky Blue FC before Senior reasserted they're up front. And like we've talked about a few times, Chicago just clogging up those wide spaces and really forcing them into Gotham's left. So it's really taken away the channels in to pit mage to Midge Purse. So I think bringing her onto that right side, especially in that right back position, she'll be able to get the ball face up and actually be able to run at people, which is one of her strengths. Purse. Cujo. And now and there will settle things down. Good job there by Kuja winning the ball from Kruger. Lloyd drops it off for Sodom Lee. Kruger down the line. Chance here for Pew if she can track it down, is able to keep it in play. Crowd appreciates it. Sin in, and that one played back. I think Purse got a piece of that in front of Kaylee Watt. What a chance for Chicago. This long ball played in by Kruger into Mal Pugh's run. Mal Pugh does the work to keep it in play. Is able to free herself up to get this cross off. And Kalia Watt in the box. But huge defensive play by Midge Purse to keep that ball out of the back of the net. That's a huge deflection. Huge play and positioning by Midge Purse in that right back position. Katra. Into the channel. Katra trying to cut back, and once again, Cujo there for Gotham. Cujo before coming over to Gotham FC was with Asheville City in North Carolina. Different path to the NWSL, but has found herself a home here with Gotham.
Lloyd crosses midfield. And then he had the hard tackle. We've already had one yellow card. Now we're going to have our second, and we're going to have Kayla Sharples handed her first yellow card. Kayla Sharples comes in hard on Carly Lloyd. I think it's more of the, the double tackle that gets her because Kayla Sharples gets a lot of the ball there. Casey Short ends up being able to kind of get that second touch. That's a huge stop by Kayla Sharples, big time tackle. Didasco loops one in. Good job there by Didasco getting it back to play it out. Colaprico to Pew. Onomonu. Now Pew in possession. Cujo. And Didasco will bring it back to Kaylin Sheridan. Sheridan looking for possible back to back clean sheets. You can feel the energy and the intensity rising, though, and Rory Danes was right. The crowd. At Toyota Park right now is just such a big influence, brings so much energy and excitement. Just that buzz back to a game when you're at home. Lloyd trying to squeeze her way through a few different players once again is able to get the whistle. And now Cujo will set up. Players will get in position. Right-footed ball towards the six. Purse. Lloyd trying to get through two defenders, this time unable to do so. Davidson. Sends it forward with the left foot. Gordon at the end line. And this one, last touch by Purr, should be a corner for the Red Stars. Six corner for Chicago. Back post. Lloyd looking for Onamanu. Keeps it in on the touchline. Goes back to Lloyd. Kruger in pursuit. Challenge there by Purse. Purse saying she got all ball, and Purse will see a yellow card. Here's a look at that collision with Hill and Purse. She gets ball, but she gets a lot of leg. Hill gets there first, gets that little tap, and Purge is able to get it, but Hill goes hard to ground. Seen two subs for Gotham FC. I've yet to see a sub for the Red Stars. Again, the Red Stars playing three games here within eight days. 
Wednesday against Kansas City and then Saturday against Houston. Up next for Gotham FC, they will host Portland next Sunday and that one will be at 3 p.m. Eastern. Game is starting to get a little bit stretched, and with that, you just kind of feel that momentum slowly building like something's coming soon. Maybe that could be right here. Di Bernardo. Pew crosses it. She had Hill right there, but goes by everyone. That one went by Watt and then went by Hill. And somehow that ball stayed in. Everyone thought it was going to roll out. Di Bernardo to the top of the box. Gordon to the back post, looking for Kruger. Goes over the head and out of play. Chicago with so many big opportunities. Kayla Sharples does a great job to strip this ball. Di Bernardo quickly transitions forward, finds Mal Pugh on the right flank, and then such a good ball in straight across the goal. You said it. Passes three players on its way out of the 18. You have to think of maybe Watt can get her foot on it and possibly another opportunity there for the Red Stars on the outside. Maybe they have that first goal. Maybe they'll find it right here. And there's opportunities where it'll literally just take the tiniest touch to redirect that ball into the back of the net. And now we will have some subs come in. And once again, Gotham will be making a move. And we will have Naho Kawasumi come in for Paige Monahan. And Sabrina Flores will come in for the left back, Caprice Didasco. So now four subs in total for Freya Coombe and still waiting for that first one here from Rory Dames. Now Kawasumi last year going back on loan playing in Japan. And then Sabrina Flores also in the third year player out at Notre Dame. Onomonu pokes it over to Long. Lee turns away. Freeman. Lee crosses the center of the field. Hill. If you go outside of Watt, that one chopped down by Estelle Johnson. Cujo. Onamanu. Johnson will play it over to our center back partner in Freeman. Flores will drop it off on the return pass. Looking for Kawasumi, but Kruger right there for the Red Stars. Watt attacking the area. Watt. With the left and that one once again right at Sheridan. Seen a lot of good things here tonight from Kaylee Watt as well as Mallory Pugh for the Red Stars. 
They've done a really good job at taking advantage of staying high and wide in that transition on the weak side. They've been able to spray that ball out into those flank spaces, and then they are quickly using their pace on each side to be able to get after them. And like we've said over and over, they're just missing that final touch deep in the box. Cujo, Johnson, Tim Mintz and some change will remain depending on how much time's added on at stop for stoppage. Cujo does a good job splitting defenders and this is gonna come back. I'm not sure why Cujo's in disbelief as well. Game just getting a little chippy on both sides. I'm not sure what exactly the call was there, though. Hill towards the corner. Purse began the game up front in that forward position, but now at the right back spot after Eric Kostrowski was subbed off. And now we'll see our first substitution for the Red Stars. And now coming on will be former Sky Blue player Katie Johnson replacing Rachel Hill. Johnson did have a goal in the Challenge Cup. Maybe she can provide some late game heroics here tonight. Of course, two games already done here in the NWL. Orlando gained the victory over North Carolina earlier tonight, two to one. And last night, Racing Louisville getting the victory two to zero over the Washington Spirit. Big game for the local product, product Amina Ekic, having a goal and assist in the first win for Racing Louisville. Ball comes in by Lloyd and then Kruger gets on it. And Sodom just comes in late after the ball's already out of her way. Watt. Purse towards the touch line. Much improved performance here tonight for the Red Stars, to say the least. Been really impressed by their discipline, their commitment to what the game plan was. All seem to be stepping at the same time on the same page. Look at that five goal game that they had allowed against Portland. Just the second time in history that that's happened. You go back to 2018 when Orlando won five to two. Davidson will play it in. Gordon. Watt. Looking for Pugh, just not on the same page. One of the rare times those two tonight have not been on the same page. Again, that will come with some more team building. Yes, they had the long preseason and then the Challenge Cup, but still. Some added practice, added games will not hurt those two players up top. I think the dynamic between them and with Rachel Hill and she put a ton of work 
ton of steps in tonight, especially defensively too, but the three of those, the three of them up top, I should say, have been, they were good tonight. They created a ton of chances. I'm also looking at two key pieces gone from last year's squad in Savannah McCaskill and Yuki Nagasato. So that's gonna be another big thing as the Red Stars really build those top players up front. How much turnover for last year for both these sides? I'm going back to that rebranding of Gotham, just all of the changes that they have made in the last year has been so impressive to see what they've done with the turnaround of this club. It's made people excited about soccer on the East Coast that don't even really follow soccer. They've just done such an incredible job of creating excitement around this club and what they're trying to do there. And then another yellow card as this one will be handed out to Cola Perico. This game's getting a little bit chippy. Intensities are high, and I think just throwing a yellow out like that is going to help calm some things down, especially in these closing minutes. If you don't take control of this game, and that's Cole Preco coming through the back, this game is going to get out of hand as people, as these two teams try to throw numbers forward and get something to happen. Cujo drives it in. Katra. Tripped off by Carly Lloyd is Davidson. Davidson looking to get this ball deep into the left, and Lloyd comes in from behind her. Davidson plays it for an opportunity. That one just over the head of Katie Johnson. She read that ball perfectly. Little time run there by Johnson. Nearly got to that pass by Davidson. Freeman. Flores. Kawasumi will drop it back to Lee. Pugh. Johnson. Going at Freeman. Johnson cuts inside. She's trying to send it to the spot where Watt and DiBernardo were. Kruger plays it in, looking for DiBernardo, sent away by Freeman. Gordon. Katrod goes back to Gordon. Plays it out wide to Johnson with the left and that one into the side of the netting. One of the better buildups we've seen in terms of possession from Chicago. It starts on that right flank, makes it all the way out to Sarah Gordon on the left. She finds Pew in the middle. Pew's patient, tries to find Katie Johnson using fresh legs from that side to their advantage, but can't get that shot on frame again. Chicago continues to sh continue to be the most dangerous team of these two in that final third. 
Nothing to show for it as of yet. Still maybe some late game heroics from one of these sides. Possibly from this player right there and Carly Lloyd. Lloyd at the end line. Purse. Purse trips up Watt and there's the whistle and Great little battle by those two on the on the right flank for Gotham. Three minutes of stoppage time will be added on into this. Lee. Cujo. Freeman will go out wide to Flores. Just no quit there in Carly Lloyd as she was able to get on top of Sharples on that play. What an incredible, you can talk about her career all day long, but She's here and she's at this level that she's still at because she's just different off the field. She does so much work off the field, mentally, physically, whatever it takes to just keep her at the top of her game. 38 years old at an elite level as that one just hops over on Amanu. Perfect position, just cannot connect with the ball. Kruger. DiBernardo looking to go back inside a pew. Davidson. Sharples. You try and get position there in Flores and unable to do so. And now we'll have a free kick though for Chicago. Such a good individual if effort by Pew to stay on this ball and make something out of it. She gets the ball up in the air, does a great job spinning, staying low, keeping her foot on the ball and earns a foul and a free kick. Now maybe in the dying minute, a chance here for the Red Stars to get that crucial goal. DiBernardo sends it in to the six. Flores giving Chase is Johnson. Kruger will drop it back for Nair, and there is the final whistle, and this one will end scoreless between the Red Stars and Gotham FC. Jackie, your thoughts on tonight's performance? I think Gotham did a good job at weathering the storm, but I thought Chicago was so good at sticking to their game plan. They created a ton of opportunities. They're just missing that final piece to be able to convert it into a goal, but they were pretty impressive in today's game, I thought. Well, the defense of Gotham continues to be strong, back-to-back -back clean sheets. Meanwhile, for the Red Stars, a much different performance tonight than they had last week against Portland, but still more from, for you here from SeatGeek Stadium as we'll take a look back at the action from these two teams in tonight's 90 Minutes. Ninety minutes complete as this game in scoreless between the Red Stars and Gotham and FC as we will take a look back at the highlights from the ninety minutes of action between these two squads here.
and Gotham and the Red Stars. In the 40th minute, you'd have a great opportunity by Gotham. They just could not finish. You see this bar end up off the crossbar, but Monaghan starts it on the left side. Lloyd does some crafty little work with her feet to draw some space in. Heels it back to Monaghan, and Monaghan sends a great one-time ball in VN. Really well done to get across and face that ball this right year, off the crossbar. The and game. then in the second half, it was pretty much Chicago creating all the opportunities. They did. They created a ton and just couldn't get something in the back of the net, but Mal Pugh up on this left side, drives it back across to Watt. Her shot gets denied, and then Rachel Hill with her left tries to go far post, can't get anything done. And then it looked like there was going to be another chance here in the dying moments here with just a little over 10 minutes remaining. And Kalia Watt on this right side again was so dangerous with the ball at her feet, little in the out step, and tries to go with her left and can't. Solid defensive performance from both these sides. Chicago looking more dangerous as we take a look at the stats. Well, possession going to Gotham, but you look at the five shots on goal for the Red Stars, that was huge. I think that was the story of the game. They created a ton of opportunities. Like we talked about, they just missed that quality in the final third to get anything in the back of the net, but they created a ton, and that's huge momentum going forward well, for this no team. Well, no shots officially on goal for Gotham, but they did hit two crossbars tonight, one by Carly Lloyd and the one highlight that you saw by Vien for the Red Stars. This is their, they'll have two more games coming up next week. They'll play Wednesday against KC, Saturday at Houston for Gotham FC. Up next for them, they will take on Portland. They will host them on Sunday at 3 p.m. as they look to go to the drawing board, but they have four points now on the season. Meanwhile, for the Red Stars, they get their first point of the year for our team. For Jackie Manny, I'm Josh Tolt. Thank you for tuning in and have a great night.